What's up, gang? Y'all know I don't like to waste time on these intros. Y'all already know the vibes, what's going on today. So let's get into the tea. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do when I'm doing a closure sew in is part the hair down the middle because that's where her part is going to be. And I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as the braiding pattern that I'm using, but you guys are going to see the braiding pattern that I'm using in, like in a, in, a, in a little bit. So you could do that braiding pattern as well. And I don't like to use braiding weave to braid hair because it's just so unnecessary. And if I don't have to do something, I'm not going to do it. Instead, I like to use beeswax or like this wax stick or whatever, just to make the front tacky so that it could have a tight hold so that the sewing could last at least four weeks i wouldn't recommend you leaving it in any longer than that but hey do what you want as to promise this is the braiding pattern that i like to use when i'm doing a closure sewing and you'll learn more why as the video goes on but then i just take this braid that's hanging and i sew it upwards to get it out the way and i make sure to sew it all the way to the tail of her braid I'm going to be working with glue so I have to clean her forehead and alcohol is too harsh so I like to use a toner and um, Seabreeze is also a good toner as well in order to clean the forehead of excess oil and dirt. And next you'll see me spraying her edges backwards and like molding them backwards. I'm also going to blow dry this on the cool setting using this got to be free spray just because I don't need her edges like hanging out when I'm trying to like apply glue to her forehead like let's just get them out the way and you can also use a got to be um gel to do this if it's easier for you to use a gel than it is to use a hairspray Okay, so now I'm putting the cap on her head and I'm also going to grab the closure that I'm going to be installing because I need to see how wide this closure is because and I'm going to mark out how wide it is too so that when I take it off, I know exactly like how much glue I should apply in terms of width, like the width of this closure because there's no need for me to put more glue when there's not even going to be no lace laying there. You know what I mean? So next I got this Ruby Kisses palette and I felt that the last two colors blended together would be the best colors for her. So I put this along the middle of the cap as well on the edges of the cap and I also did put this on the bottom of the lace closure. Didn't record me doing it but I did do it. So don't think I didn't and I'm using the Erica J hold me down adhesive today so so excited about this glue I'm gonna let you know exactly what me and my client felt at the end of this video about it but I applied the glue along like right in front of her hairline and I smoothened it out with a popsicle stick and I proceed to go ahead and sew the cap all around. I only need as much cap space as I have closure space. So I don't need to keep this whole cap on her head. It's unnecessary. I can, but like, for what? Now that that is done, I can go ahead and cut off the excess cap, which I told you we do not need anymore. And if you like pay attention to the front, the glue has dried now and it has dried clear, which is what we want. And I'm also going to cut off the cap in the front as well because we definitely don't need that. I usually do about three to four layers of glue so right now I'm going in with my first layer and you don't want to use too little but you don't want to use too much glue you still want this to be like an even um, like an even layer but you want to use enough glue so that it actually holds down for like a couple weeks and it dried very clear and this is my second layer that I'm going in with right now and as this layer is drying I believe I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing in the bundles in the back and I'm gonna be doubling the tracks I have a whole video in which I explain my methods as far as how I like to sew and what's important when sewing so I'm not going in that much detail in this video as far as how how you should sew if you want to know how then just click this little 
I don't know what it's called, but it's up here in the upper right corner. And you'll learn how to make a wig and you'll learn my sewing techniques. But as the glue is drying in the front, I do like to go ahead and just get started with the bundles in the back because that's what's going to take the longest anyways. And there's no point in just sitting around twiddling my thumbs while the glue is drying. So now that the second layer of glue has dried, I'm going in with my third and I believe final layer of glue. I got these popsicle sticks off Amazon, by the way. It came with like a pack of like a hundred or like a pack of a thousand or something like that. It's not that much, but it it wasn't that much money, but it's definitely very useful when doing this. And after that, I just continue sewing, which I'm going to let you guys watch. If you guys have any questions at all, of course, feel free to comment down in the comment section. I'm really nice. Like, I don't mind talking to you guys. I want to talk to you guys. I want to, like, if you have any other questions that I didn't cover or if you have any suggestions that you feel like would be better than the things that I'm showing, tell me. Talk to me. I love to talk to you guys. Don't forget to like this video. I'm going to remind you right now. Don't forget to leave me a comment subscribe to this channel follow me on instagram all of that <laughs>When the third and final layer of glue dried I did take the closure and I started to lay it down so I like to make sure that the closure is positioned exactly how I need it to be positioned before I lay it down and I don't necessarily even lay it into the glue right away I have her hold on to the closure just so that it could be steady where I want it to be and then I go ahead and cut off the side tabs which I've told you guys before you really don't need you can keep them there but you really don't have to so I guess it's just the a matter of preference I prefer to take them off and when I do then I really lay the lace into the glue by using my comb in order to press it into the layer of glue you don't want to use your fingers and you also don't want to like press it into the glue too aggressively because sometimes that can make it look white and like gooey and at that point is like no return so just do it the right way, use your comb, keep your fingers away from this glue, and you will be a-okay. Next, I'm going to start sewing this closure into the braids. And it's very important that when you're doing closure sewing that you braid the hair um, vertically and not just straight back like cornrows as if you're doing a frontal. Because where are you going to sew the closure into if these braids were going back? It would, it would be kind of weird. It, it wouldn't work. So that's why I said you'll get to know why I use this braiding pattern later in the video. So that's why I braid it how I braid it. But I'm just going to continue to sew this closure all around. I'm going to get one side sewed down. And once that's sewed down, then I'm going to do the other side. And then I'm going to do the back just to prevent me from causing this closure to be unsymmetrical or anything weird like that I also do want to mention that I had already plucked this closure before she even came to get her hair done. So if you're interested to know how I pluck my closures or bleach knots, I definitely have those videos on my channel. But I will tag my plucking video up here. Now that the closure is laid down and secure, I'm just wrapping it around with this like fabric that I got from Walmart and I'm going to continue sewing the bundles in the back. As you can see, she's holding the blow dryer to the front of her closure and I have her hold it until I'm done with the very last bundle. As much heat as you could get on the closure, the better to melt. So she blow dried this until all three bundles were sewed in and it is on the heat setting. Again, I'm not going into detail about my sewing, so you guys can just watch a little bit until I have something else to say.
up until the track that lands right above the ear I usually double them and I also flip over the track so I don't cut them but once I get to the track above the ear I start cutting the tracks now because if you start flipping them the sewing is going to be more lumpy than it needs to be it's not going to be as flat as it can be and she doesn't mind that the tracks were cut anyway so I'm definitely going to cut them to get the best results out of it and I also do want to mention that um, when I'm doing a part in the middle sewing I like to start taking the tracks and curving them like this not so much just placing it straight on the braids I like to curve them just a little bit just so that the hair can start to fall on the forehead a little bit and if you have a big forehead and you're insecure about it this is a great trick that you can use if you still want to do part in the middles but you don't want to look like five head start curving your tracks so that they can fall on your forehead a little bit and like you know cutting your forehead off just a little bit but if you like that straight look like the, the tracks are straight and they're just following straight down not falling on my face then you could do that as well but again this is how I like to do it and this is how my clients like to look so this is what it is <laughs> Once you start getting towards the closure, um, you want to get, well, I like to get as close to the closure as possible, but I still don't necessarily sew my tracks into my closure like a lot of people do. You can do that, but I don't necessarily put them together. I just get them as close as possible, and that's fine. It works out fine. You don't see any type of gap towards the end you'll see you can let me know if I don't know you can let me know if you feel like you see a gap but you won't see any gap just because you're not connecting the two and in about two to three weeks when she needs a um a recurl not a recurl when she needs a like a touch up it'll be easier for me for the tracks to not be connected if that makes sense it just would be easier for me so again it's a whole preference thing <laughs> But I'm closing out the top right now and then we can move on to styling the closure. This looks so bomb, so flat, and so perfect. I'm not sure where she got her hair from, but I'll probably get her to come and comment down below where she got it from because I don't know. But I'm wrapping the front of her hair down again because I'm going to be using this mousse. And I don't want the mousse to cause the closure to start to lift. And before I put the mousse on, I'm just defining my part a little bit more. Making sure that it is actually in the middle. Not doing no lean with it, rock with it. There's no weird things here. And then I start the molding process. I definitely went over this molding process in my styling tips video which I will tag up here if you want me to go a little bit more in depth with it all but I use as much of this mousse that I need until I feel like this hair is molded how I want it to be until I feel like it is flat and then I start blow drying it on the heat setting until the hair is completely dry. Now I'm just cutting off the excess lace with the razor comb and I don't know why I don't have the clip but I definitely took the same brush that I put the makeup on the cap with and put the makeup on the lace with and I just dabbed a little bit more of that makeup on the very front of the lace to make it blend in a little bit better. Right now I'm using my wax stick just to lay down flyaways and to further mold the top to be super flat before I go in and hot comb this. All of these tips are also in my styling tips video so that's why I'm just kind of skimming over it not really going into detail or anything because I've talked about it before and you guys can go watch it. And after I flat, not flat ironed it, after I hot combed it. This is how it looked, very flat, very cute. And now I'm just going to run a little bit of bio silk through my hands and through her hair before I flat iron the entire head. When I'm flat ironing hair, I like to use small sections, but not tiny, but small sections to make sure that I'm actually flat ironing 
every single bundle i don't want nothing to look wavy or curvy under this if she leaves me and her hair start looking curvy and wavy that's her but initially you should flat iron all of the hair even if it's already silky straight because the heat just makes it look even better makes it feel even softer makes it flow even better and I don't use excessive product when I'm doing this, whether I'm using hair from my hairline, House of Vein, or not, because it just flows so much more effortlessly when you don't don't when you don't overkill with all the products. So now I'm pretty much done. I'm just making sure the front is a little bit flatter than what it was with my with my flat iron. Nothing major, it's just flat ironing hair. You guys know what it is. And I believe that was it. Let me see what's next. Oh my gosh, she looks so good. Look at that. Look at that blend. Oh my gosh, she looks so good. But now I'm just going to define her part a little bit with this Morphe brush. I love to do my eyebrows with this brush. If you guys watch my makeup tutorials, I always use this brush for eyebrows. And it's so thin that it's perfect for putting it in the part as well. And that was it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Oh wait, I forgot to mention that this Erica J glue is bomb.com. I like it better than Bold Hold. I like it better than Ghost Bond. It lasted about two weeks until it started before it started lifting on her, which is normal. Glue has to lift eventually, so that is fine. Definitely highly recommend. Five stars. See you next time. Thank you again for watching.